I'm Kevin Shaw and you're watching the Watercraft Journal. It's been a while since the Watercraft Journal has published an episode of vicious rumors and vile gossip. And that's because, frankly, we just haven't encountered anything good in the way of verified, leaked information. So when we discovered that Kawasaki's legal department had filed not one, not two, but 22 patents for new designs, innovations, and technologies for future jet skis, we were floored. The first eight of these patents all pertain to features and designs on existing jet skis. They included the three-way adjustable seat design, the gull wing doors, the multi-mount handlebars and rear storage track system that's exclusive to the Ultra Deck, the Jet Sounds 4S stereo system, LED running lights being incorporated into the front bumper, and the overall aesthetic of both the redesigned Ultra and STX jet skis, respectively. But that leaves us with some very interesting and quite frankly exciting new designs and technologies that honestly would put Kawasaki far, far ahead of the game. The first of these documents, we get details on how the watercraft can be operated without a rider by using a low speed battery powered electric drive and control system, which is effectively a secondary propulsion system to the internal combustion engine. Imagine you've stopped at a sandbar. The tide comes in and the ski begins to drift away before you can even catch it. Suddenly, a signal alerts a secondary ECU within the ski to ignite a battery powered drive system. The pump silently whirls to life and servers manipulate the nozzle cable directing the ski back to its original location. This is the first of three calling system patents. A geolocator that first identifies the jet ski on a GPS grid and secondly, marks its current location on the grid and maps a path back to its previously marked location where you last parked on the sandbar in this example and is careful to avoid all marked obstacles. The second of these three calling system patents allows the new system to not only identify its position as well as calculate the rate of speed wherein it traveled from the last pin location. This allows it to evaluate whether the ski drifted away or the rider fell off at speed, but it also can communicate with other similarly equipped skis. The slow speed operation retrieval system has a secondary function as well, that of driver retrieval. The secondary ECU will recognize the specific parameters common to a rider falling off and will engage the electric drive to return to the last GPS marker where the lanyard was removed, bringing itself back closer to the ejected rider. Additionally, this ability for the jet ski to maintain itself near silently through a GPS controlled electric drive system permits the calling system to serve as a digital anchor. So rather than weighing an anchor overboard, a fisherman can engage the GPS locator by removing his fishing rod from a special rod holder, indicating that he is wanting to remain stationary, and that will allow the electric drive to keep you steady for hours. This system hinges upon the watercraft's GPS signature, which all ultra jet skis currently have via its GPS track speedometer. As part of the aforementioned patent, a companion patent not only alerts the rider of possible collisions with stationary objects, but other watercraft in motion as well. Communicated through the TFT digital dashboard already in the current Ultras, a full color GPS aerial image will identify your jet ski, the local topography, marinas, docks, etc., as well as other vessels providing alerts if the GPS tracks vessels approaching at high speeds as well as periphery warnings for nearby obstacles. Think of this like the blind spot alerts on modern cars. As much as your current TFT dashboard is designed to operate in this sphere, so is your rearward facing camera. A new patent details that all rearward facing cameras are operating at a fraction of their capacity. These cameras will feed vital footage to the image processing software in a standalone CPU that will calculate your jet ski's location in relation to obstacles and other watercraft. Equally, the camera when used for towing skiers or towables also has the capacity 
to alert the driver through the TFT dashboard when your skier or raft passengers have quote-unquote detached. Displaying an overboard notification on the screen. Using the previous GPS marking software, it will also pin the last location of the fallen passenger for quick retrieval. Of course, with this degree of GPS tracking, the Kawasaki's TFT dashboard will now be able to provide some of the most detailed travel history data. Whether linked through your mobile device's Bluetooth connectivity or nearby Wi-Fi signal, the CPU's communication interface will be able to store terabytes of storage through internet connectivity. Outlined in another patent, the new tracking capabilities will monitor GPS routes via a series of digital breadcrumbs, correlating in vehicle speed, throttle position, fuel consumption, and other several factors that will equip you long hauler riders with some of the best data gathering available on personal watercraft. Now, if all this high-tech wizardry didn't get you excited, maybe this will. Kawasaki is developing its own double-walled liquid-cooled turbocharger. The single greatest hurdle for OEs offering a turbocharged performance watercraft was heat mitigation. Turbos and their circuitous plumbing raise engine compartment temperatures far worse than superchargers. The cast aluminum inner housing can be enshrouded in either a second cast aluminum case or in cast steel, although the patent itself does not restrict what materials it can or will be used. This will also keep intake charges cooler and mitigate heat soak over long durations. More intriguing than Kawasaki's new marinized turbocharger is its electronically driven supercharger. Outlined in a new patent, the new supercharger can be driven by the combustion engine, then, via an electronic clutch, disengaged from the mechanical drive, and when commanded, driven by an electric motor. This would effectively free up the combustion engine to operate at greater efficiency as the electric motor driving the supercharger will eliminate all parasitic loss from driving the supercharger. Moreover, the electric motor can spin the supercharger at a greater RPM than what the internal combustion engine could, radically increasing boost and thereby horsepower. Offshore racers have been employing aftermarket turbocharging systems for over a dozen years with tremendous success both in performance as well as fuel efficiency and engine longevity. Equally being able to free up the current internal combustion engine of parasitic loss and spinning the supercharger up way above normal boost speeds all point at incredible power outputs from even the existing 1.5 liter 1498cc four-cylinder engine. In the final documents, we were shown a pair of revisions from the existing STX front storage compartment, namely a watertight membrane that keeps the hood from leaking under heavy water conditions, a new three-point locking mechanism that secures the front storage lid far more firmly, and an electronic locking mechanism that secures all storage latches until released via the dashboard or electronic key fob, and that's for all Kawasaki jet skis, Ultra, and STX. The final patent offers four different designs for an improved ambient water induction system that improves engine and exhaust cooling. These new inlets infused into the hull surface itself or through inlets molded into the pump tunnel draw in water quicker and process them through the engine and exhaust more efficiently, passing through dual mesh strainers and finally out through the pump itself or the transom. Typically, when we at the Watercraft Journal have received leaks like these, it's taken about one to three years to come to fruition in a production vehicle. Yet many of the levels of technology being proposed in these documents seem well beyond what is seen in the power sports market currently. Certain items like the STX hood latch, water intrusion seal, revised water cooling ports, and even the turbo forced induction system all appear like low hanging fruit that frankly could be quickly introduced. The self-driving calling system, digital anchor, and rider retrieval features are absolutely phenomenal and certainly would change safety standards for the PwC industry, but seem just a little bit further away. Equally, so would collision avoidance, electric security locks, and the tow sports camera that alerts the driver of a fallen rider could all radically change the public's perception of how safe these machines are. It's all very exciting stuff for sure, and rarely do we find patents that go unused, 
But in this case, we wonder how much of it is a matter of if, if not when. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching the Watercraft Journal. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. It'll definitely help us grow the channel. If you want more awesome jet ski content, please visit us over at www.watercraftjournal.com where new articles are written and published every single day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you. We'll see you there.